It's a bread you'll want to sleep on. Fluffy, soft, cotton-like white loaf bread. That's what we're making today. It's the perfect base for toast, chocolate sandwiches, or any breakfast option, really. Or meal, for that matter. Of course, as our leavening agent, we're using fruit yeast water. To find out more about it, there's a link in the description box to our video on it. Do check it out. Now then, to start with the bread, we have to make poolish. Just grab flour and yeast water in equal amounts. Mash them together until you get this homogenous blob. It's going to look a little lumpy and unpromising. However, after 12 to 18 hours, it will rise and look a lot better. When we have a mature poolish, we can make our dough. We're going to be using milk, milk powder, sugar, salt, more bread flour, and finally, butter. It's an impressive lineup that's going to make our bread soft and fluffy. Especially butter. Butter makes everything better. We'll start then by throwing the poolish into a mixing bowl. Since I'll be using a stand mixer after this, my stand mixer's bowl. You can definitely knead this dough by hand though, you don't need a stand mixer. But it might be a bit tricky, especially because we add butter. For now, whether by hand or machine, we still follow the same steps. After the poolish has been fully dropped in, we add the milk in first. So our poolish can soak in a milk bath like Cleopatra. <laughs> Just kidding. We add the liquid in to make it easier for the poolish to dissolve. Then we can throw in our milk powder. Very convenient way to add milk solid and tastes without adding too much liquid. When milk powder is in, continuing on with sugar and salt. With that, we'll stir all the ingredients together, gently, for realizing that being gentle is not working and stirring way harder. Once it's relatively well mixed, we're gonna add in bread flour. and mix it in a couple of times with our spatula before placing it into the stand mixer that has been set with a dough hook attachment. We're then gonna turn it on to a low speed at first because this recipe doesn't call for us being coated in flour. Let it run on that speed until the loose flour has been incorporated around one to two minutes. We can bring the speed up to a medium, let that run for around three to four minutes or until the dough has become cohesive. Once it's become cohesive, that means it's developed at least a little bit of gluten structure. So we can now add in butter. Butter actually interferes with gluten development. The fat in it coats the proteins in the flour, preventing them from linking up. That's why we're adding it last after the dough has developed some gluten. And this is softened butter, by the way. Leaving the butter to soften a little before we add it in makes the mixing process much easier. Once the butter has been thrown in, we'll start the mixer up again on low for one to two minutes. Initially, the dough will look like a mess. There'll be butter coating everything. The dough will look like it's come apart. It's not a pretty sight, but don't worry. This is completely normal. After the butter has been slathered evenly, we can raise the speed back up to medium, let it run for another eight to 10 minutes. As we let it run, the dough will eventually start coming together again. It'll be smooth and get paler in color. Until finally, here is our dough after being properly mixed. It's very cohesive and smooth, not sticky anymore, but still a little tacky. We can test for its readiness with the window pane test. Just taking a small segment of the bread and trying to spread it out until it becomes semi-see-through. As you can see here, this dough definitely passes well. If it didn't pass, then it would have needed more mixing. I would have let it go for another two minutes before testing it again. Then we're just gonna take the dough out of the bowl and form it into a round bowl. 
You could do this on a surface if you'd like to make it easier, but I like to do it just by holding it and tucking it in this way. We're then going to drop the dough into a well-oiled bowl. The oil is going to help the dough come out of the bowl later because while the dough isn't sticky, it is still tacky. We'll cover the bowl with plastic and we're going to bulk ferment it now for around three hours or until it doubles in size. Fermentation is something that depends on a lot of factors. Importantly, temperature is a key one. The cooler the temperature, the longer it would have taken, and the warmer the temperature, the shorter. After the dough is doubled, we can get to work on it. Lightly flour your work surface, then we'll turn the dough over onto it. If you've got enough oil there, it should drop out quick. If not, it could take a while. Once it's out, we'll just shape it into a log, pressing out some of the excess gas in there. It's really enjoyable just popping those bubbles, degassing dough is so fun. But anyways, after it's turned into a log, we're going to divide it into three equal pieces. I'm also using a scale to make sure they're exactly the same weight. We'll then round each piece into a small bool, forming a smooth surface atop each one using these motions. Cover them and we'll let them bench rest. This is going to give the gluten in the dough time to relax. We'll just let them rest for 25 minutes. This makes shaping a lot easier since tight gluten can tear and that's no good. So 25 minutes being up, we'll take off the cover and start shaping our relaxed dough balls. First thing to do is roll it out with a rolling pin into a long rectangle. Press down to really degas. You should hear bubbles popping. Make sure to press down on the edges of the dough to get all of them. Again, degassing dough is ridiculously fun. Then we're gonna try to square the corners of our dough before folding a side in like this. Make sure to get a straight outer edge with this fold and then repeat it for the other side. We're gonna roll it out again now, pressing out any remaining air. Then we'll curl up the dough starting from the top all the way to the bottom. There you have it, a neat and lovely roll. This roll is going to go into its final proofing spot, its baking pan. This is the one I'm using. I've also lined its insides with a good layer of butter so the bread won't stick to it. The first roll I'll put in at the very edge. Then we'll shape the other two rolls in the same fashion as before.
put them in next to the first one. We cover it with plastic and we're done working on them. We let them prove for two to three hours or until they reach this height. About 15 minutes before the dough finishes proofing, we start preheating the oven to 185 degrees Celsius. Then when they're done proofing, it's baking time. Take off the plastic cover and we can choose to bake the loaf either covered or open. It's up to your own preference for the loaf's shape. After that, just put them into the oven. We'll bake them for 10 minutes, bottom heat at 190 degrees Celsius. If we're turning it to top and bottom heat, let it go for another 25 to 35 minutes or until the top turns golden brown. Then we're done. If the pan was well buttered, then it should eventually slide out. Beautiful. Look at this gorgeous loaf. We can pull it apart and you can see how soft and flaky it is on the inside. It's just delicious. Smelling. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Bye!